Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Crossing Pass Television Ministry. And today, again, a special guest all the way from down in Ohio here. And my wife's going to introduce her in just a moment. But do you know Jesus? That's what Crossing Pass is all about. Amen. We don't give you religion. We give you a relationship. And I want to tell you something. The Lord is for real. He's coming back soon. And I'm going to ask you, are you ready? Are you reading the Word of God? Do you have no desire to read the Word of God? That was me 40 some years ago. Mm. You have no desire to go to church or just go to church on Sunday. And you have no desire mm. to tell people about Jesus. Well, let me tell you something. Maybe you're lost. Maybe you're not born again. You know, it's funny. You can talk all you want about the Steelers and, and your job and God. Everybody says, God this, God that, God that. And all of a sudden, you can't talk about Jesus because you don't know him personally. Mm -hmm. and the Bible says you can know him personally mm -hmm. by listening to this program or someday someone will witness to you about Amen. their changed life. So today, mm -hmm. my wife here, Joyce Reed, and I want to tell you something, Joyce, oh. we met them down <laughs> where? In At Linda Weber's church. Linda and her son, Zach, have a nice church in Cause Shockton. Am I saying that right? Cause Shockton. <laughs> Cause Shockton, Ohio. And um, this beautiful young lady, Brenda, you did a fantastic job that day. She fixed a delicious lunch, decorated <laughs> the fellowship hall, and we so appreciated that. And uh, as we got to talk to her, we said, this lady's got to come and speak on TV. So here we are, and we're going to let you share a little bit of your life. Uh, please, honey, tell us a little bit about your life and uh, something that's going to help somebody yeah, out where there. Where were you okay? born again? Where right. were you raised up and so forth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was born in the early 50s, mm -hmm. and my mother was unwed. Mm -hmm. And, of course, at that time, it was very shameful. Yeah. My grandmother, she had eight children of her own, and so she helped raise me. But she was a Christian, and she worked in youth ministry for 14, 15 years. Good. And um, she always felt that there was something special. And so she watched over me. But I would fall asleep at night listening to my grandmother in the front room on her knees praying for everyone. Wow. Mm. Didn't matter how tired she was. She was always in there praying. And mm. um, when my mother got married, mm. um, the man she married was not my father. Of course, I was little. I didn't know that then. Mm -hmm. But I always sensed something. And um, he severely abused me and beat me. Wow. And uh, mm. my grandmother, she, the doctors wanted her to adopt me. And she couldn't break my mother's heart. So she said that I figured my love was you know, the most right. because I let you go, but I prayed for you, you know. So I would go to church with her and uh, with my father-in-law or my stepfather, the way he was. Um, you were just afraid to do anything. And you knew at 4 o'clock at night when he came in and stuff, you didn't know what was going to happen. You know, and um, so we lived in that kind of fear. So you were just a youngster at this time. Oh, yeah. Little. Yes. Wow. And so um, anything <sighs> happened that my brothers would do, I would always get the beating. And so I would go to, you know, school. And back in those days, you had to wear dresses. And sometimes I would go with stripes on the back of my leg from a beating the night before. And so I wouldn't play. I would just stand there because, you know, I didn't want anyone to see. Right. And um, so later in life and things, I met my husband, but just a couple years before then, um, my grandmother had moved up like 30 miles away from the church. And so she didn't always get to come and her health was starting to deteriorate. And so um, she 
heard the Lord one night say, make sure you go to church tomorrow because we were raised in a Baptist church mm -hmm. because Brenda's going to get saved. And so wow. she made granddaddy drive in and um, I didn't know she was coming, uh -huh. but I was with her sister and her daughter. And so they had, I think it was the Blackwood Quartet or something, they were singing, The King is Coming. Mm -hmm. And I, I broke, I couldn't, I couldn't hold back because if I got saved before, because now I'm out of high school, mm -hmm. I couldn't go home and tell my stepdad because I'd probably get another beating, you know. Mm. So I went and I went forward and the next thing I know, I heard Reverend Hankins say, well, Mrs. Kenneman, what are you doing here? You're saved. And she goes, that's Brenda Lee, you know. And so she was there, you know, for all, you know, the time that she had prayed uh -huh. all those years. And so then we got married and my husband and I, and he was already saved. He was saved in a little Baptist church too. And um, we actually got engaged on Christmas day of 72. And uh, when we got married uh, in 73, probably a year later, he was doing construction and he fell through a, as he was hanging drywall, he fell through a, um, a hole in the floor. Oh my. And so he got a back injury from that. And so it became so bad that they didn't know what to do. But when he was a teenager, he was on the wrestling team and he'd already had a ruptured disc and had surgery and stuff. And they didn't know what to do again because they were afraid this time it was going to leave him paralyzed. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and so he had spent probably three weeks in the hospital. But prior to that, going in, he had to lay on the floor because he was so much pain he couldn't lay in a bed. And so I would have to dress him and <coughs> take care of him and go off to work. Mm -hmm. And there were some times, you know, he was in so much pain that he didn't even know that I was doing anything. Oh, my. You know. And so this last night, and it was getting close to Thanksgiving, and I'm like, I really want you at Thanksgiving dinner table with us at grandmother's. And so I talked with my grandmother, and she says, Brenda, don't you believe anything that you've heard in our church? Because she says, Jesus heals. Speaking in tongues, everything's real, Brenda. They didn't believe that. No, but that was devil okay, worship. Okay, good. I'm glad your grandma did. <laughs> you know, but she goes, I know God. And it's true, he can heal. And so I listened to her and I went to the hospital to see him mm -hmm. one night. He was in so much pain and he's, they're keeping him doped up, you know. So I went home that night and he had even said to me, he was, I think it's time you just divorce me. You know, he said, oh my. you can't be married to a cripple the rest of your life. And we had just, you know, been married like a year or so. And I goes, no, because I really knew God told me to marry you, hmm. you know. And so I went home and I got on my knees that night and I said, this is it. I said, God, my grandmother doesn't lie. <laughs> and I said, you can go into that hospital room right now and you can heal him and you can let him come home and sit at the dinner table hmm. for Thanksgiving. And... What I have seen in church all these years, people wearing masks and mm -hmm. living the do's and don'ts of mm -hmm. Christianity. Saying one thing and doing the other. And then going outside mm -hmm. the, the door of the church and living defeated lives. If that's all you are, I don't need that. But yeah. I need the Jesus my grandmother told me about. Wow. And I want you to show us who you really are. And if all of these things are real, then I want them. Good so I went to the hospital the next day and they released him. And he sat at the dinner table wow. for Thanksgiving, you know. And so it wasn't long after that. Now, he wasn't totally healed, okay? He still had to have a back brace and pain pills once in a while. But God said, I'm going to totally heal him. And so we went and he got a job with this company out of Buffalo, New York. And we had to travel all over the country and building shopping malls. Mm -hmm. Oh, And so we would go from one destination to the next. Most of the time we traveled by airplane, but then they were gonna send us down south. Well, we knew we didn't wanna go in and out of airplanes and living in hotels. So we got a travel trailer and we went on a little journey. 
And the very first place I went, the both of us, was Charlotte, North Carolina, mm -hmm. right next door to a Baptist minister. <laughs> and his wife and I became good friends. And we were gonna be leaving in a couple of days. So she said to me one evening, she says, I want you to come over. We're having like a Deborah Circle meeting tonight. I want you to come and, and be with me because I'm gonna really miss you. And I said, okay, I will. And as I'm walking away from her, going back to my little trailer and stuff, I said, Lord, you know, I don't like those things. And he goes, Brenda, I want you to go and I want you to be helpful. I want you to listen and not say nothing. Mm. But at that time, see, the PTO club, the 700 club, all that was coming on, mm -hmm. you know, and they're saying, you know, make contact with the TV and you'll be healed and all these things, yeah. you know. Come touch the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I went that night uh -huh. and I listened. And as I sat down, I was helpful to Melly. But the Lord kept drawing my eye up on the wall. And there was a plaque with Jesus, a cross and Jesus hanging on it. And I kept looking, you know. And so they had their little meeting and things. And then afterwards, you know, um, this one lady, she says, well, what do you think about that? Lay your hand on that TV, that 700 club and that PTL. What do you think? That is just devil worship, you know. And I'm like, mm. now, Lord, you know. And so he says, look up and I looked at that cross again and he goes I'm still up there mm. in their life I'm on the cross they don't know my resurrection power mm. they don't know it and he said but I'm going to show you it and so I said well I ask you to show me truth not anyone else right and so I'm going to trust you so the next place we went was Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And we parked next to a little trailer. And out of that trailer came the two brightest lights I ever saw. They were born again, filled with the Spirit, speaking in tongues, had gifts of healing. I mean, everything. And so we became best of friends. And then her husband had a job at the mall with building the malls like my husband did. So they became friends. So we would go golfing at night and mm -hmm. different things together. Her and I, we loved to sew. So uh, we just got to know each other. And so I'm digging into the word every day, you know, and asking God to manifest himself to me, show, you know, continue right. to show me. And so um, I got a phone call and my grandmother and my mother was coming down and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm just so delighted. So I'm hurrying around there trying to clean our little trailer and I picked up my sewing machine because I carried it uh -huh. with me because I did that in my spare time. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I had a back pain. And I'm like, oh. And I thought, I gotta go lay down. I don't know what to do here. And the Lord said to me, he said, that's the same pain Rich has, my husband. Mm -hmm. And he said, and I'm gonna heal you just like I wanna heal him all mm -hmm. the way and show you who I am. And so about that time, there was a knock on the door, and here was the next door neighbor, and she goes, the Lord told me to come over here that something just happened, My and I goodness. need to pray. And so she prayed, it all left. Well, that night when we went out into the golf course and things, I saw God's creation in a whole new light. I mean, it was just total night and day of what the beauty of the earth really looked like, mm -hmm. you know. And it just seemed like, you know, I'd see a little creature running and I'd say, oh, Lord, just let it stop so I can look at it. And just one thing happened after another. Well, we left oh, that sweet. town and he still hadn't been healed. And so we had to, we ended up in uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Um, one night, one afternoon, I had a knock on my door and it was Elaine and Rex. There they were, our friends, you know, and they said, we just live up in the mountains about 45 miles away. And God told us you were down here and he led us right here today. And I said, oh, wonderful. So we, you know, we were all excited because we could have friendship again, you mm -hmm. know. And so on my husband's 23rd birthday, they came down for dinner and it was his birthday's in December. So we got a phone or a uh, 
message came over the TV that said that there was a snowstorm up in the mountains and nobody could go through unless you had chains on your wheels. And so we said, well, we'll just spend the night. Well, I knew in my heart that that night was the night that God was going to heal him. Oh my goodness. And so I'm scouring around there. We put the little boys to bed and I'm sitting there doing dishes and I'm getting this awful backache, okay? And I said to the Lord, I goes, now if you're gonna heal him, let's get the show on the road because, <laughs> because yes. uh, my back hurts. Uh, yes. And so my husband had <laughs> just- up, Lord. Yeah, and so my oh, husband had just said to, to Rex, pray for uh, me, Rex, I want healed, you know. Uh, and Rex looked at him and he goes, you know what? I hear the Lord saying that he wants to heal Brenda first. And I'm like, now Lord, I've been praying for him, but not me, uh, you know, this is new. And so he said, come over here and sit down. He said, Lord's tell me you have a leg shorter than the other. Mm. And that's why you have that backache. And so I goes, well, I don't know. So they put a board behind me and sure enough, my one leg was long, shorter than the other. And so he said, I'm gonna pray for you. And he started praying and I felt and saw the presence of Jesus right there. And I mean, it was just phenomenal. All of a sudden, my husband would call him Doubting Thomas, okay? Oh, okay. And oh. so here's my leg. It just doesn't meet the other one. It goes a foot longer. And what? he's sitting over there looking, and I'm like, oh, Lord, am I going to be a freak or what? You know? And so what happened is Rex put my feet down, picked them up, and they were perfect. Perfect. And so um, he asked me, he says, is there anything else you want to pray for? And I said, well, because of the abuse, I can't have kids you know, and so I like to be prayed for that. So he prayed for that, but then he said something. He goes, God's gonna deliver you of those bad dreams you've had since a childhood that mm -hmm. came from your abuse tonight. Mm -hmm. No one, I had never spoken that to anyone. I never wanted anyone to know, because I lived in terror from that. And um, we went, and that night I felt like I was a baby sleeping in the arms of Jesus, and he was just rocking me, and I've never had a dream since. Yes, that was thank bad. You, Jesus. But then we put my husband over there in the chair, mm -hmm. and sure enough, I'm sitting here anticipating this real long thing, like, you know, like my husband. You. Uh -huh. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it just grew, and he's perfect, and he was able to lay down on the floor and you know, twist his legs and twist, I mean, all these things. God finally healed his And back. he had to take that brace off. You know, but the next day he goes, you guys didn't trick me, did you? And I goes, no, that was the Lord, you know. And he said, that's what I think, you know, I know. And, but the men, they said, oh, put that brace on that, which did, they're just playing tricks on you, you know. But he didn't, because he ended up having to take the brace off. Mm -hmm. And he ne has never wore it again. And even with the, um, the compensation, because it was a workman's compensation case, years later they wanted us to, fight, to, to make a settlement. Uh -huh. And we never would, because he said, the Lord healed me, so why do I want to take that money? Uh -huh. You know? So um, we went on our little journey of the Lord just manifesting himself to me. And you both were healed. We both were healed. And then um, a few years later, I had a first son, my first son, but um, that was the greatest healing. <laughs> but he died at birth. Oh, did he? Oh, he did. I'm sorry. He did. And the devil tormented me Aww. about it. But at the same time, Evelyn and Oral Roberts had just lost their daughter and son-in-law in that airplane crash. And she, Evelyn was on there uh, talking one Sunday. My mother called and she said, you got to listen to Evelyn. And so Evelyn was having torment also over the, what was happening. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I couldn't even close my eyes without the devil's hands around my neck trying to choke me. And she said, she had enough. She said, I went to the back door, opened it up, took a broom and said, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And out, the devil out, out, out because God has a plan. Okay. And so I got up and I went to that door and I said, devil, you're out because God promised me a son, because I promised him if you would heal me, I would give both of you know, my children to be raised in the Lord and they would serve you, Amen. you know. You've had any children then? Pardon? How many children have you had then? 
We have two. we have two, a boy and a girl, and they're they were in youth ministry, and then my son-in-law and my daughter came back to Columbus from Atlanta about four years ago, mm -hmm. and they opened up a, their own church. It's called Real Church in Pataskalo, Ohio. So what are you doing right now? You're in Conshocton? Well, I'm kind of like in transition because I came to Conshocton only to open up a bed and breakfast uh -huh. because I thought it was a way of being able to minister and I knew all the pastors back home and things because I always did floor design and I'd set up banquets and mm -hmm. uh, at the church, you know, and uh, flowers for corporations and it's a great way things. to witness, great way. In, your, in, in the heart of your abusement, abusing, okay, did you get healed from that? I did get you healed got a, from one that. minute or two yeah. minutes. Can you tell me about that? Okay. I went and um, I actually saw myself, and I think growing up in church you don't, I saw myself as a real sinner. Oh. And I said, God, I want healed, I want hold, because he was showing me that there's this bitterness because mm -hmm. he had me go back to the farm I grew up on and he had me walk through it the night before, remember every offense, forgive everyone and forgive myself and forgive the Lord for not being there. And he said, tomorrow I want you to come back and I want you to watch the house burn. Mm -hmm. And as I was on my way, I felt a knife go into my stomach and twist and twist. And I cried and cried. And as I got to that farm, they just opened up so I could get down the road, mm -hmm. parked in the field across the street from me. And I saw the house go up in flames. Then all of a sudden I saw a ring of fire. And the Lord says, what do you see now, daughter? And I said, mm. I see you and me. I saw the Lord in the ring of fire with a little six-year-old girl skipping and happily alongside of him holding his hand. Did you ever have the chance to reconcile with your stepfather? Yes, I did. Good. Yes, I did. God went in and he showed me. I mean, he took, you know, uh, I got up one morning and I was spending time with him and I literally had a chair where I would go to and pretend he was sitting there. Mm -hmm. And as I started to sit down, there was a poisonous spider on the ground, a black spider, and mm -hmm. our carpet was dark. And he said to me, he goes, as I go, as you're trying to kill that poisonous spider, he said, I'm going to go in the deepest recesses of your heart and expose the poison there. Because all the abuse, I stuffed everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your emotions, you know, uh, they become just like a garbage dump is what he showed sure. me. And so he said, I want you to go back to the farm and walk around, and there's eight stepping stones. And he said, I want you to take them home, and I want you to remember that these are a place of remembrance from where I have delivered you. And he said, um, now go over to the basement where the basement is, and what do you see? And I said, I see ashes. And he said, blow in those ashes. Mm -hmm. I blew, and he said, now what do you see? And... I said, I see a hot bed of coals. And he said, those are your emotions, and I'm going to heal those emotions. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you've been listening to a testimony here. And oh, you know what? Wow. Emotions are hard to heal. Yes. And there's somebody out there been watching this program, maybe a, a mm -hmm. woman or a child that may be being abused now. I don't know. But mm -hmm. there's hope. There's hope. Now, mm -hmm. she's forgiven it. And I know mm -hmm. I can't, never went through it. I'm sure Joyce never went mm -hmm. through it, but mm -hmm. she has. We can't understand it, but God is real. And I'm telling you out there today, and I really mean this, that uh, if God can heal me or Joyce or whoever you are, he can heal you. Mm -hmm. Some people got the idea in their mind that I've done so many things that God will never forgive me. Well, that isn't what the Word says. You know, if you don't know the Word, then you'll never be healed. He said he sent their word, his Word and they were healed. You know, in the beginning was... Okay. The Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were from God. And, and, that, and God sends people into your lives today, this testimony, or crossing paths is trying to bring you testimonies of different people here. And a lot of, a lot of people haven't been in a um, drug field, or the gambling field, or the sex field, or they've been going to church all their life, but they don't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you people, just going to church Sunday morning doesn't know, you know, mean you know Jesus. You have to make a commitment 
to the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made. Okay. Now you say, I said that when I joined the church. No, you might have joined the church, but did you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? And I'm telling you here today that we have these testimonies that are coming all over the country to crossing paths. We're on the move. We're there for you today. My challenge is to you today, listen to me. Don't believe me and don't believe my wife here. <laughs> don't believe our guest. Pick up the Bible and prove me wrong. <laughs> what have you got to lose? Mm -hmm. But see, you're not, you can't pick the Bible up because you're not born again. You, you have no desire to tithe your income, and tithing your income won't get you to heaven either. But God wants you to know that he's alive. So ask the Lord right now to come into your heart and say, I'm a sinner right now by faith. I receive you into my heart. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, died on a cross for me personally, arose from the grave, walked on this earth, ascended to heaven, and intercede for me personally. Say, Lord Jesus, write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life, I'm born again according to the Scriptures. If you said that prayer, we have telephone, we have people answering the phones, standing by. Mm -hmm. And the telephone number is there, it's 24-7, 724-981-7777. Now, seven is God's perfect number. Or 1-855-981-9777. Crossing Pass is here for you today. We love you. Tell somebody about Jesus. Invite him today. Today is the day of salvation. The most important decision you can make is the one to follow Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. In John chapter 14, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And in John 3.3, 3, he said, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. If you've made the decision today to follow Jesus as your personal Savior, we'd love to know about it. To help you get started, Crossing Paths wants to offer you the free gift of a Bible. So please call us locally at 724-981-7777. Or you can reach us internationally at 1-855-981-9777. For more information, visit us on the web www.crossingpaths.org